हेलो एवरीवन टुडे लेट अस स्टार्ट द चैप्टर रिसोर्स एंड डेवलपमेंट दिस इज द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ ज्योग्राफी ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड टेंथ द फर्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट इन दिस चैप्टर इज रिसोर्स नो वेन एवर यू आर आस्ट अ क्वेश्चन अबाउट अ रिसोर्स यू आर ऑलवेज रेडी विद द डिफिनेशन दैट एवरीथिंग विच इज अवेलेबल इन आवर एनवायरमेंट and that is used to satisfy our needs is called a resource from a junior classes you have learned this definition but we have the expanded form of this definition in our definition we have included three conditions the first condition is technologically accessible the second one economically feasible and third culturally acceptable so our definition of resource will be everything available in our environment which can be used to satisfy our needs provided that it is technologically accessible economically feasible and culturally acceptable it is termed as a resource first it must be available in an environment second feature it must be having the capacity to satisfy our needs next it must be technologically accessible here technologically accessible means we must have appropriate technology to convert a particular thing into a resource example we are having sunlight and if we are not having a technology to assess then we cannot call a sunlight as a resource we must have a pro technology to use it economically feasible economically feasible means we must have enough money first second the cost of production must also be within our reach the third is culturally acceptable culturally acceptable means that the people of the society the human beings they must accept that thing as a resource so we can define resource as everything available in our environment which can be used to satisfy our needs provided that it is technologically accessible economically feasible and culturally acceptable the figure that you are seeing this figure is the interdependent relationship between nature technology and institution here we are having human beings the human beings is interacting with nature human beings has has made institutions and with the help of technology human beings they are converting natural things into a resource so there is an interdependent relationship between nature technology and institution if any one of these is missing we are not able to convert a thing into a resource so what is the meaning the meaning is the process of transformation of things available in our environment involves an interdependent relationship between nature technology and institutions Now, what are these human beings doing? Human beings, they are interacting with the nature, and with the help of technology, they create institutions to increase the economic development. So, economic development of the country is dependent upon using the resources in a proper way and developing the resources in a proper way. Now, let us classify resources on different bases. first of all we would be classifying resources on the basis of origin on the basis of origin resources can be classified as biotic resources and abiotic resources bio means life so those resources which are obtained from biosphere and have life such as human beings flora fauna fisheries livestock etc these are biotic 
resources. In short, we can say these are the living components of the atmosphere. Then we have abiotic resources. Abiotic resources are those things which are composed of non-living things. These are abiotic. Example, rocks and minerals, they are abiotic resources. So biotic resources are the living components and abiotic resources are the non-living components. Second classification is classification on the basis of exhaustibility. On the basis of exhaustibility, resources can be classified as renewable or non-renewable resources. From the word renew, renew means once again we are obtaining it. Renewable and non-renewable resources. The resources which can be renewed or reproduced by physical, chemical or mechanical process. So all those resources which can be renewed or reproduced by physical, chemical and mechanical process, such resources are renewable resources. Examples of renewable sources are solar energy, wind energy, water, forest and wildlife. Further, renewable resources can again be further classified as continuous and flow. I repeat, renewable resources are further classified into continuous and flow. Very, very important for the one marks. Classify renewable resources further and you have to classify it as continuous flows as and you have to classify it as flow. Okay, one marks question, very important. Then non-renewable resources. Non-renewable resources, these occur over a very long ge geological time. These resources takes millions of years in their formation. Non-renewable resources. Either they are not renewed or the renewation or formation takes millions of years. Examples are minerals and fossil fuel. So on the basis of exhaustibility, Resources can be classified as renewable resources and non-renewable resources. Index classification is on the basis of ownership. On the basis of ownership, resources can be classified as individual resources, community-owned resources, national resources, and international resources. Now, what are individual resources? From the name itself, we can make it out. Individual resources are those resources which are privately owned by individuals. It means these are the private property of human beings. Example, our land, our houses, our plantations, our plots, all these are individuals. Why? Because these belong to human beings. Human beings has the right to use it in their own ways. The next is the community owned resource. Community owned resource means the resources that can be used by all the members living in the society. Example, grazing grounds, village ponds, parks, playgrounds, etc. You can name many more of these. All the people living in a society, they have the right to use them. So these are community owned resource. The third category is on on the basis of ownership is national resource national resource all the resources which belong to the nation the country has legal powers to acquire even private property for public welfare it means all the resources which belongs to a particular country is a national resource and the government of the country has also the legal power to acquire the property for the welfare of the public. You must have heard government taking the land of the farmers in order to build canals or dams, government taking the land of the people in order to construct roads means for the welfare of the people, government has the legal right to acquire this property. Examples of national resources are minerals, water resources, forest, wildlife, land within the political boundaries of the country and even the ocean areas up to 12 nautical miles 
that is 19.2 kilometer from the coast nautical miles is the measurement unit of measurement in in water as for example in order to measure land we either uses miles or we are using kilometers similarly for measurement of area in water we are using nautical miles the fourth we have international resource international resource are jointly owned by different countries of the world there are international institutions which regulate these type of resources for example oceanic resources beyond 200 nautical miles of exclusive economic zones belong to open ocean and no country can utilize it without the permission of international institutions now when we want to sum up resources on the basis of ownership we can say in short individual resource belong to a particular person community resource belong to the members of the society national resource belong to the entire nation and international resource belong to all the countries of the world but for international resources you are having international institutions and with the help of those international institutions or with the help of those international organizations with the permission of those international organizations you can use or the countries resources can be used by different countries of the world now let us discuss the classification of the resources on the basis of status of development on the basis of status of development resources can be classified as potential resource developed resource stock and reserves now what is a potential resource resources which are found in a region but has not been utilized means they are available in an area but we are not utilizing it for example western parts of india especially rajasthan and gujarat have large potential of the development of the wind and the solar energy we know that that large potential we have for the development of wind energy and solar energy in the parts of gujarat and rajasthan but as far as their use is concerned we are not using them properly because it is not properly developed so these are potential resources what are developed resources then resources which are surveyed and their quality and quantity has been determined for utilization means after after doing survey we have come to know about their quality and we have come to know about their quantity the development of these resources depends upon the technology and the level of feasibility and if you want to develop these resources we have to see whether we have the appropriate technology or we have different levels of feasibility as we have discussed that we have economic feasibility economically it is possible or not are we having enough money to convert those things into a resource whether conversion will be economical or not that we have to consider so for developed resources after the survey done we came to know about their quantity and the quality but uh, the development of this resource will depend upon the technology and the level of feasibility that we have now let us discuss about stock the third classification under the category of ownership or development minerals in the environment which have the potential to satisfy human needs but human beings do not have the appropriate technology to assess these is called a stock it means these are the materials which are available in the environment these has the potential to satisfy our needs but what we had do not have we are not having appropriate technology we don't have appropriate technology to assess these so we are terming it as a stock let us take an example we know that water is a compound of two inflammable gases one is hydrogen and oxygen h2o is water so this hydrogen and oxygen can be used separately it can be used as a rich source of energy but at present we don't have the appropriate technology we don't have the technical knowledge how to use them 
so hydrogen and water hydrogen and oxygen is a compound of two is a compound of water so we can use hydrogen and oxygen separately but uh, due to the lack of technical knowledge we are unable to use them therefore it is termed as a resource the next category reserves it is a subset of stock it can be put to use with the help of existing technological knowledge but their use has not been started these can be used for meeting our future needs example water in a dam forest etc is a reserve because it can be used in the future now let us sum up the classification of resource on the basis of the status of development the first we have potential resource and potential resources are the resources which are found in the region but has not been utilized means they are present in the region we are not utilizing it and uh, then we have developed resource developed resources are the resources which after their survey their quality and quantity is known to us and their use will depend upon how much technology how much technical technical knowledge we are using it then we have stock stock is the min minerals or materials in the environment which have the potential to satisfy our needs but uh, it will depend upon the level of technology that we have the knowledge that we have for example we took an example of water h2o hydrogen oxygen separately can is a rich source of energy but uh, at a time we not having the knowledge of uh, utilizing these two then we have reserve it is a subset of stock subset of stock means it is a part of stock it can be put to use with the help of existing technological knowledge whatever knowledge we are having whatever technology we are having we can put to use but we are not using it means intentionally we have kept it so that our future requirements can be used example the water in a dam a forest whatever we are having in a country intentionally we are not using it we are storing it we are keeping it it as a stock so that when we require in future we can use it in a proper way